Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting, August 5th, 2019, here at 7.02, here at the Deerfield Town offices. The agenda for tonight is to review minutes if we have them, review some mail, take any public comment, and that would be brief questions or comments from the public that are not already on the meeting agenda. Then we're going to look at some new business. Uh, it's, well, it's new old business. Um, about 198 Mill Village Road, which might have some changes to the project that affect, that affect the site plan. So we're going to be presented with these cha changes and see if there's a need for more review. Um, then some old business, we're going to continue. The planning board will continue discussion from the previous month regarding possible changes to some of the bylaws, uh, including marijuana establishments, solar electric, lot size and shape, and accessory apartments. And we hope to see if we need to schedule any public hearings on that or not. Then we have two uh, uh, pieces of business that were not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. So they weren't on the posted agenda, but uh, we'd like to be able to take them up. And that's two A&Rs, 53 Eastern Ave and 23 Saw Mill River, or South Mill River. And the reason why we want to do that is because we only have 21 days um, to take them up. So if they came in even... Today, we, it's great if we can get them on the agenda. Then we'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Anything else for the agenda tonight? So do we want to uh, take it in that order? Or, uh, or look, are, are people here with, for the A&Rs? Let me ask that question first. Um, but then there's also people here for the other, but I think the other might take... All right. I mean, we like to think A&Rs go quickly, and sometimes they do, so let's give it a shot. Um, but before I do that, any comment, uh, any public comment about things that aren't on the agenda tonight? Seeing see none. All right, 53 Eastern Ave. Let me read the uh, thing, and if the person here for that could come up to the table here, that would be great. I want to open that up and... What's the address again? So this is from uh, the, the Boron Irre Irrevocable Trust. And it's a uh, 53 Eastern Ave. It's to divide two existing parcels into three new lots, one empty lot, one lot with existing house and one lot with existing garage. All lots meet all current zoning requirements for the center village residential zone. And I have an application and the check was submitted to the town and it was stamped, so I guess it's an official application. Um, so if you can just tell us who you are and tell us what, which, which lines are moving on these. On yeah, these. no, I'm David Boron, and it's a property I grew up on. My father bought it originally from Charlie Dean, and, and he bought it for a complete homestead, and he always said I had the building lots and one on each side. And we're, we're trying to sell the property now, and... Um, we can't get interest like in all the complete unit. So we do have interest in someone to for the building lots or just the house. So we're trying to go ahead and do what we got to do because it's costing a lot of money sitting there empty since my mother died in February. So the location is Eastern Avenue, just just past Cross Street. Correct. Yeah. All right. So can we can you tell what's going on yep. here? So this is all one parcel of land. I mean, this is the house and garage. They subdivided, added these two lots. So this was the original, but now it's going to be three lots. But you say you want to divide two existing parcels into three. So was were there already two? Originally, it was a there was an empty lot on the west side. A building lot was empty, but lot that was one. part of the the house property. And my father didn't even know that. He thought that was the empty building lot, but the building lot was considered the one that's already that he has his garage on. So there was like two lots, the house and an empty lot, and then the garage lot was a se separate one. So so we want to take the built first building lot on the west side. So there's a building lot there, which is vacant right now. And then the house 
on a separate lot, and then the garage is another lot. I mean, we'd still like to right, like so to I still like to sell it as one complete unit, but we're not getting much interest, you know. And so each one is 100 foot frontage. Yeah, yeah. excess. Yep, yeah, it meets all the requirements. So. Okay. But again, we're not making them building lots, but they're. Uh, no, but you you we, we can't we can't put them as building lots. We can just separate them out into lots for you. Right. Doesn't mean that they're building lots, and as far as we're concerned. You understand that? Well, yeah. you can do what you want with it. Just right. Yeah. The planning board's job is not to endorse it as a building lot, but it meets all the requirements. So once right. this is subdivided, you can go to the building inspector and get it. Yeah. Right. right. But but what we're going to do tonight, if we give it to doesn't you, say exactly doesn't say they're building say, lots, okay? Right. Good. It's close. Yeah. Doesn't it's not an endorsement of an approval of zoning, but it, yeah. didn't we ask it to say? Right. Somewhere it should, it should say, say that. This is not. Uh, this is not an endorsement. Planning board endorsement under the subdivision law should not be construed as either endorsement or approval right. of zoning requirements. Well, so it's, it's not, not the wording we usually ask. No, it's for. not. Uh, Randy should have uh, should known that. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, it's a little more specific than that, saying that this I does mean, not. I, this does not mean right, that we're right, saying right. it's a building yeah, lot. Right. Not a building lot. Right. 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 Sure. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, um, right. there's nothing about so. having. Nope. It's fine. Garage is a different structure. We sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now, did did you have a tax bill that was the whole thing together? Tax you, bill was an empty lot to the west in the house. That was one tax bill. Second tax bill was on the garage lot. It's just a garage. There's no house on the on the. Uh, okay, so there was, this was two car garage. Considered one, and that's yeah. two, and now it's going to be three. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so it looks like you might have changed the the lines on on the yeah, lots. Yeah, what it was is the the deck was um, the existing property line for, that splits the house and is. A ta uh, that's um, the two-car garage. Yeah. yeah. The but existing line actually, it didn't give it the right setback from the deck. I see so that dashed line so going the there. Surveyor suggested to move it 10 feet over past the deck because yeah. the garage lot is quite a bit larger. Anyways. Yep. So and you're going to make suggestion. three lots from two. Yeah. So that's that is what they're saying here. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All set. Yep. I move to approve the uh, ANR for. Uh, the uh, born of irrevocable trust. I second it. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. So you got it. Four zero zero. Today's date is eight. So we know. Do, who's got that mylar? That's right. Here. Oh, okay. Right. So let's just write. Uh, I'm just going to add on here. Not a. Not endorsement of a building lot. How's that? Sounds like a plan. Did you sign that, Max? No, I was just going to let. You okay. Guys all right. Do I was. Them all and then well, here. I'll the, pass. The, I'll sign plan. these. These two here and hand them to you, and then you can sign. Okay. There's two. To sign. He would he'd be the one that determined whether it's a building lot or not. Yeah. So great. And then that way they might have to go look at the property and make sure that it is a building lot, not just the plan. Yeah. How many do we need to sign, John? We need three, right? But this, this is all signed here with all four, four signatures.
Busy, huh? I don't, I don't go so fast nowadays, so I'm always busy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. All right, okay, so here so you John can... Uh, signs those if you need them. Oh, no, these need to get... Are those, are those all signed? Yeah. If you sign two more of them and give it to him, he can... Okay. Again, and then we'll keep these. Keep these. in December and ended up with eight hours shoulder surgery. I wish I could say I crashed something, but I didn't. Feet went out and under me. I'll get some of my line, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just roll it back up and do it then. That tends to slow you down. This, yeah, this is an extra one. I'm just giving the extra one. So I'm going to put it right on the top. Did you want to write this on the on the? Uh... We did. Here you go, Dave. You're all set. Thanks. Good luck. See you later. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. How you doing? How you doing? So we're getting back. I thought Eastern App was a good place to. That's some more bands here. Off, trying to make one here. <laughs> busted. Uh, you busted it. Did you get one of these, uh, Max? Next one. Oh, you know what? That didn't have a... Uh... Thing in it. Maybe he emailed it. I'll ask Priscilla to make sure I'm supposed to have electronic copy too. Yeah, yeah. Where do they keep that? And who yeah, was that? I didn't get the guy's no. name was with David. Uh, Larry Miller. Larry Miller. Pamela? All right, so then we're going to look at one uh, A and R for 23 South Mill River Road. Right. And it's a. Uh, Separated 1.5 acres from the rest for applicant to purchase house from sibling. Hopefully the rest will be in APR, the applications in. But the main thing we just want to know is um, <coughs> the separation. So it's a bigger parcel and you're just separating out 1.5 acres? Yeah. And this is on what road? South Mill. Right on South Mill. Yeah. So it abuts set right and 116. So right near the corner is set right. Okay. Separate one point five acres. So a lot. So that's the one point five. So we look at. So with the there's a frontage on South South Mill. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a lot of frontage. What is that? Yeah. All right. The, um, uh, what do you call it? Surveyor. She left enough frontage on all places. So. Yeah, set right. <clears throat> it looks like it has. Set right, 116. Yeah. The rest okay. of South Mill River Road. Where's 116? Oh, yeah. Road. Oh, wow. All right. And this other, this. This parcel's is already here. Yeah. So it's just this one. Yeah. Yep. It's a dotted line because it's already. Well, isn't it? Doesn't it have to be a? Uh... So the house. I don't know. Usually that would be a solid Small barn and garage is on the on. Pardon? The house and the small barn and the garage are on. Yes. The... Right. And what was your name again? Pam Fisk. Pam Fisk. Pamela. Okay. Yeah. So we have the application. It was stamped. Check received. So we have the frontage, we have the size, the angles, a little bit funny, but nothing. Yeah, and then usually that's a solid line like this one. Here. I know. And then the rest of it's going to be given to uh, 
you're going to give it to, to some organization? It's still going to be ours, but it's going to be an APR. APR? Yeah. So will it actually be part of your property then? Well, it belongs to my brother, my sister, and I. That one and a half acres will be mine, but that the rest of that will be my brother, sister, and mine. Okay. So I don't know what we're, you know, ultimately, it'll go to a farmer if it goes into APR, you know. So your, your three names will be on two different deeds? Or no. yours will be on one deed and then the, your name will be on the, the second yes. deed? Yes. I'm just, I'm just curious because that, well, yeah, that would explain perhaps why that's, that's, that's a dashed line because if the other two, if the other two parties does, you know, die or something happens, then you, you automatically get the whole property. No, oh. but what, what the decision we're making is to make, I know. To make yeah. that a property. So yeah, it's that's actually property. Should, should, yeah. It's, it's a property. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Okay. Are you yeah. so they're going to grow here? No, I don't care. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, so that's, that, should be a, that should be a solid line. All right. I, we know what it is. Okay. I know, but it will the, uh, <laughs> the next person looks at it. Yeah. All right. Sure. Who did this? Mary Ann. Yeah. Hey, just, um, and see this language. Let's see. See, that's the language that we like. It says mm -hmm. it does not qualify as business building lots. Oh. Any other questions? Um, what? What's that? I move to approve the a &R for Arnold Leonard Skalski, Sandra J. LaCroix, and Pamela Fisk. Uh, thank you. If everybody. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those no. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Four, zero, zero. So what were the three names again? Pam Fisk. In your motion, you gave three names. Arnold Leonard Skalski. Arnold Leonard. Andrew J. LaCroix. LaCroix, excuse me. No, I was just going to wait for the whole stack. Oh. Yeah. Okay. These all signed by you guys? I'll just for myself. Seen you in a long time. It has been a long time. Yeah. All right. So you. Pat, yeah, we'll pass this down. We'll finish signing. So I'm just thinking there's only four. So we keep two and they keep two. Yeah. Although we'd like to keep three. I have another one. If you need another one, I can. Well, why don't we just give you the. Um, my you line. just need the Milo, right? Yeah. And you have another one. All yeah. right. Then we keep the three because we. I think it's assessor, building, and, and planning board. Okay. Oh. oh, this was wrapped up. I, I should have said at the beginning of this, there's four of us present, um, Max, Paul, Kip, and myself, and four out of seven is a quorum for the planning board. So with that, make sure the minutes have the four names on. It's a little risky when I saw the one, uh, Marianne says, 
and Marie said she couldn't make it. She had said yes a couple days back, and right. that's when I thought, oh, good, we're going to have a quorum. And, yeah. Yeah. If I just have the Mylar Max, I'll just. <clears throat> there you go. Here you go, Pam. Thanks. See you later. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Take care. Thank you. Yep. Thank you Man, it's good to have a happy, happy customer sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> two for two. Let's see if we can keep it up. <laughs> see, our only problem is that we don't know if it's a yes that makes them happy or a no that makes them happy. <laughs> okay. All right, so, um, so Chris, uh, We've been told that there's some new information, some changes to the project. Um, so we don't have the site plan in front of us for 198. Um, um, sure. And so what I brought is sort of an informal set of plans, the original and new, that highlight um, some changes that may be significant um, in terms of the site plan that I wanted to step through. Um, this, this very new business is ever-changing, um, and so I, I'll uh, just talk a little bit about what led to a couple of these things. Um, uh, and then I just want to step you through what they are and determine, I know every town um, has different procedures for, for dealing with changes, so um, uh, I hesitated to bring these ahead while we still had some unsettled um, business with the, with the decision being filed. Now that's all squared away, so I um, just wanted to make sure that we're approaching everything procedurally the right way. Um, but basically, there have been sort of three sources of changes. Um, one of them is, uh, I guess I'd qualify it as market pressures. I don't want to get into the business uh, details of my client too much, but um, I think that uh, it's surprised everyone in the industry about how slow the state licensing process has been. Um, and so they are looking at now uh, at the earliest, the winter probably, um, before they'll uh, have a license from the state and have any chance of putting plants in the facility um, and are looking at what that market may look like down the road. And so that's uh, led to some phasing of the project, not just seeing it in this project. Uh, I have another project down in Northampton that's, that's uh, been put on hold for at least a year, um, a cultivation project. Uh, there have also been some operational changes based on some lessons learned on other facilities that these folks are running in other states. Uh, that goes a lot of changes internally that aren't really relevant to the site plan, um, but have also taken a look at uh, just some operational things and some security things that, that we've made some improvements on. Um, and then there have been some changes with thoughts toward resiliency. Um, we have a certain amount of natural gas available, but with the moratorium, there's going to be propane use on the site, uh, significant electricity, which Eversource can provide. Um, but uh, these folks are looking at, well, what happens about that blizzard that happen comes in the middle of January and cuts the power for a couple of days, and we can't get propane trucks in? Um, so there have been some, some changes uh, for additional fuel storage on site. So that's sort of the background. I'm going to hand this out, and I have some boards. Shamefully, I did. I forgot to bring my easel tonight, so I might have some better. Did the one up there work? Um, for the time? Uh, I'll be with right that whiteboard. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not so big enough for the camera to catch anyway, probably. Um, so the first sheet here is again just a stripped down version of the site plan as it was approved, the second page. And could you just uh, give a quick two minute? Summary of what we're talking about for the uh, viewing audience also. Yes, so this is uh, 198 Mill Village Road, uh, which was until recently the home of Pioneer Gardens, uh, which grew perennials in a large greenhouse um, on the existing site. That property has been purchased by Suns Mass Inc., which is, or it's, I'm sorry, the property has been purchased by Go Grizz. Uh, which is a, a real estate dedicated LLC, uh, but to be operated by Suns Mass Inc. Um, for all of those liability reasons why, why they create these LLCs. Um, in order to uh, use the site for marijuana cultivation, uh, we're in the process uh, after an approved uh, special permit and site plan review and stormwater permit. 
um, of constructing the site to ready it for uh, cannabis cultivation. There is an application in to the State uh, Cannabis Control Commission to allow cultivation at this site. Uh, it is cultivation only. There's no manufacture, no retail, which are the other types of marijuana licenses. Um, Thank you. And so, oh, hold up. great. Um, so there are um, a couple of places on the, on the site that I'd like to highlight. Um, in our original proposal, uh, there was, uh, in addition to the existing greenhouse, which is being renovated on the interior, uh, we had proposed a 33,000 square foot uh, harvest and processing building where we'd take the cut plants, uh, dry them, and package them to be sent off to wherever they're going to be going. Um, there was, uh, there's an existing barn in this portion of the site that was used by Pioneer Gardens that uh, originally was intended to remain. Um, at the main entrance of the site, uh, we had proposed a, 20 foot, a single 20-foot wide swinging gate with a guard booth to control um, access. Of course, the perimeter of the entire site is secure um, to keep uh, unauthorized folks out. Uh, Septic field was proposed here toward the center portion of the site in uh, a property, 196 Mill Village Road, that was also purchased uh, by our client and uh, merged into the site. Uh, there were provisions for uh, some level of uh, propane storage tanks and then a parking lot with a total of 52 spaces plus additional overflow and also access um, for operations within the site. Um, and then there's just a summary of what I'm calling the hardscape areas, the roof and the, and the paving, both of existing and new buildings, the greenhouse as well. Um, and so as we look at the new site, um, again, some of those triggers for the changes. Um, the barns uh, that are located in this portion of the site were evaluated and determined to to not be adequate for the operations uh, that, that were to be uh, done in there, and so the proposal is to demolish those barns. Um, actually, they're not entirely going away. Uh, Yap and Aryan uh, are actually planning to take down uh, one of the barns and move it to their new location and reuse it, so uh, that won't be disposed of, which is a good thing. Um, the elimination of that building lets us uh, reorganize the site access a little bit, uh, you know, uh, consolidate the parking in a, in a more efficient uh, manner in that portion of the site, um, and then open up the center of the site for a little bit easier access getting around. Uh, Yup has told us that he'd get a 50-foot tractor trailer turned around in the middle of that site uh, in the old condition, which I'm skeptical of, um, but we uh, certainly want uh, to make sure that that truck access Access is easy and safe there. Um, as uh, Blake uh, started traveling the nation looking at other facilities and access control and security, uh, it, it became apparent that uh, there were some improvements that could be made um, to the access of the site. Um, in particular, the goal here is to put the guard booth in between an entry lane and an exit lane. Uh, this uh, creates a couple of advantages. Um, so just quickly, the, the layout that we're showing here is uh, a single 11-foot swinging gate, which would be the uh, entry point uh, into the facility for entering traffic, um, a guard booth on a central island. Um, this layout allows us to have the guard in a position to talk to vehicles that are entering the site while remaining in the booth and also having the fence between the guard booth and the entering vehicle. Um, then that way that communication can happen while the vehicle is still outside the facility um, and also prevents the guard from having to exit the gate uh, in order to have that conversation. Um, and then a 15-foot rolling gate uh, on the exiting side, uh, which is both for exiting traffic and also uh, gives us a, a larger gate uh, if there were a larger vehicle uh, to travel in there. This then allows uh, the guard to be able to communicate with the vehicle exiting um, more conveniently. Um, and then uh, down in this portion of the site, uh, the footprint of the proposed building has been reduced by approximately half. Uh, it's about 16,000 square feet uh, as proposed. Um, and in addition, as, uh, as I was discussing, uh, there was a lot of talk about resiliency to the site. Um, and once it became apparent that it was important to have 
a significant volume of propane on the site. Uh, the mechanical engineers started then um, playing around with different efficiencies that they could uh, gain inside, knowing that there was a limited natural gas supply to the site, um, and the efficiencies of scale led to it being ad advantageous to, uh, to put a, a much larger uh, supply of propane in the site uh, for those efficiencies. And I'll note there that there are some very uh, detailed permit process that we're going through with that. Uh, it's a multi-step process. The first one is a land license uh, that we need to apply through the uh, select board, uh, which also the application itself is signed by the fire chief who we've been in communication with. Um, and then uh, the select board uh, reviews that permit through a public hearing. And after that's approved, there's a very detailed technical uh, application, including a fire protection plan uh, that goes to the state fire marshal's office for review that, that looks at such things as uh, the technical details of the tanks themselves. This is because the tanks are over 10,000 gallons, which is the, the threshold for large tanks. Uh, the technical details of the tank, uh, the response uh, ability of the fire department, uh, the, oper the, uh, the operation and maintenance uh, plans for the site. And uh, so those have been located uh, in a spot that is uh, convenient um, both to the greenhouses, to the proposed building, uh, also to the first phase of the greenhouse, which is to be built out in this area here. Um, the goal actually, it's not terribly relevant, but the goal is in the first phase of construction to make uh, this section of the greenhouse uh, fully operational to the point where a license can be granted um, by the state, uh, and then while the business is gearing up in that portion of the greenhouse to continue renovations um, throughout the, the rest of the interior. Um, and this building, the processing building, not just uh, reduced, but uh, is also uh, falling to a later phase of the construction. Um, where, where was the original uh, greenhouse that was being torn down? The greenhouse being torn down. Yeah, you had you had all there. the greenhouses there, and then you said you were tearing. If my memory oh, serves right, you had one. Um, you mean originally? On the original one, yeah. Um, so there's about 24 feet of greenhouse um, in sticking this out. That, uh, yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's that, what, that's that has that's already been demolished. Yeah, okay. um, And that was to meet the zoning setback. Just, just as curiosity there. Correct. So that little strip there is off. Okay. Or would be on. Um, Right, and, uh, and then, uh, well, uh, that does rearrange the site to a fair degree. Um, I, I do know that, you know, we talked uh, extensively about some of the uh, impervious area coverages, and so I did want to total up the, uh, the differences there, um, which basically uh, we're removing a significant area of roof um, and then adding back some pavement to the point where on net uh, we're actually increasing the green space slightly. From the original plan. And so what will happen if in your next phase um, with the service, impervious service? Oh, uh, that, that is the full build-out total. Um, that oh, is, so this is assuming that you put another building in over here again? That, that this assumes that this building uh, gets constructed in a future phase, yes. Oh, so, I see. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand that. Okay, gotcha. Right. Um, so this plan reflects the final uh, condition of the site. I was just noting that, that it is being phased yeah. in. But um, the 16,000 square feet will come later in another phase. Uh, correct. Okay, good. That's, I was writing down notes here and I missed that. Fair enough. Um, and so uh, presenting these changes just to, to understand to um, what extent, you know, if it's a, if it's a full site plan package that needs to come in to be reviewed or things that need to be, you know, there's anything from that to, to uh, submit it for record. Uh, and so we're uh, here to just uh, clarify any of these changes. I didn't want to drop off uh, plans unannounced and have everybody confused about what was going on. Um, so we are here to ask what the appropriate next steps are in the opinion of the board. Um, even though the, the processing uh, building is basically cut in half, is that a, a, retention, a retention or detention pond that's in front of it? I know it's not really a pond, but a drainage area. It looks like that has been cut in half uh, it, as well. It is. I 
I meant to highlight that too. Um, so this infiltration basin, uh, which was sized primarily for accepting the roof runoff of the original building, yeah. um, because we are utilizing the permeable pavement, um, so that essentially doesn't have runoff that, that we need to catch. Oh. So, But not all of the pavements are going to be permeable, is it? Uh, there was a need, uh, right, and I, I also uh, did not highlight that we've relocated the septic fields um, right. up mm -hmm. to the side. So there was a segment of pavement that uh, was impermeable in the original plan, um, but uh, it was small enough that it ran off, it essentially runs off onto the permeable uh, area and we create enough of a reservoir uh, with the soil section below the pavement um, that it doesn't need to be caught by a separate basin. So uh, where's the, the where, since you moved the septic system, where is the septic tank going to be located? I, I up, see where the leach up, field is. Mm -hmm. Up there. Yeah, and I simplified this a bit, but um, so the, the office building here yeah. has a septic tank uh, dedicated to this building. The new building would have its own dedicated septic tank. They're collected into a single pump chamber uh, that it's pumps up to, to the fields. Um, and that's all gone through the, the um, health uh, permitting with the health inspector. Just curious, I've got the, at the boundaries, there's a little, um, is this the north? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, it's the north. So that it's a bigger parking lot up against that plot line over there. So where's the drainage? It's all coming. Again, just so I mean, I'm, I'm thank you for bringing this. Uh, but again, I, w I would think some of the some of the stormwater management things look like they have changed and so that's uh, something yes. we probably want to have yeah and looked at so uh, that's part of the question is if, uh, yeah. if an additional peer review is appropriate we're um, yeah. certainly happy to go through that process and and submit a package uh, necessary to go to the engineer and then what's what's the Propane storage tanks on. Is that pavement underneath it? Or? Uh, they will not be paved underneath. They'll have uh, concrete saddles, uh, which then are on footings that go down to frost. Um, and so they'll be uh, sort of a loose stone, uh, typically, is, is what goes underneath that for housekeeping, um, just within the footprint of it. So do you count that as hardscape area or not? Um, I would not. If it were compacted gravel like a like a driveway yeah. I would but uh, this is uh, loose stone it if I you know in the model it would be a slightly different runoff number than grass um, uh, which we'll certainly uh, submit to the peer reviewer but the uh, given the the sandy soils that we have there the uh, I will say that changing that number in the model uh, would not alter what we'd expect the runoff characteristics to be. So I assume that these entrances here are how you get to the tank to fill them? Correct. This looks like a driveway they yeah, get over there. Yeah, that's a driveway around there. Correct. Yeah. And that's, uh, how, how wide are those? Uh, 15 feet, I believe. Okay, so the fire department and everybody can get in easily. Yeah, and we've been reviewing this plan back and forth with, with okay. Chief Melnick. Right. So the the larger tanks are a case that you get snowed in or something, and it's it's uh, there was a bit of an iterative process. Um, the initial trigger was thinking about, uh, yeah, if, if we get snowed in and the power's out for a few days, um, in that event, uh, the uh, financial impact of losing a crop numbers in the millions of dollars. Um, so they essentially want to be able to 
run this facility enough to keep the plants alive um, at uh, which they need something like 50% input um, over those couple of days when they're down. Um, and so that led to, and I, I only know enough to be dangerous about mechanical systems, but um, uh, they started uh, rearranging some of the decisions that they'd been making about heat and, um, and power uh, in light of the fact that we have the limited natural gas supply to start moving toward propane. Once we started moving toward that and realized that having that resilient supply on hand was important, that led to uh, economies of scale uh, in changing a little bit more of the equipment to propane. Um, so the essentially the propane demand of the site has gone up significantly from what it was anticipated um, originally. Um, there's a number of other mechanical changes that have gone on inside uh, in terms of the different ways that they're delivering air um, and uh, controlling. Uh, so this is square factors. over here. Is that the generator? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, the backup generator. so that they can supply the heat directly with the gas, but then power the generator to then deliver electricity. Um, uh, again, if, if they're down in January, now they need lights um, to, mm -hmm. uh, okay. to power, uh, to help the plants uh, survive and in good shape. Can you maybe tell me quicker that I can find who was our peer review on this? On this uh, Weston part? and Sampson. Uh, I don't remember the gentleman's name who was here. So, so I guess the question is, what, what do we need? To, uh, I guess I'm wondering, what, what's the time frame between phase one and phase two? And what do you anticipate? I mean, years or, or months or what? Um, I hesitate to be too committal, but uh, the sense that I've gotten is 12 months, maybe 18 months behind phase one. Um, but I, mm -hmm. I say that with a little bit of uncertainty. But the question to us is, do we want to have this, do we want to review this again? It's a different plan than what we reviewed and approved. Right. We're proposing a final condition that's different, um, mm -hmm. regardless of the phasing. Yet yeah, it's not, I don't know, I don't know if I'd say substantially different or somewhat different, so do we You're just get, a, do do we we just get an update or do we want a full new proposal? With, with a public hearing and do, not, do we need one or not? Yeah, that's yeah. another thing that we might actually have to yeah. double check with someone. I don't but. think that we have to do the whole thing, but because of the, the, the coverage in the yeah. driveways and stuff, you know, there's no numbers here, so it's really hard to determine. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that uh, Chris has put down here is a, a net loss of... Right. And again, my intention was not to yeah. be detailed no, no, like that. I, 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 I yeah. give the scope of the change. Yeah. I think that if they just check, re, submitted new calculations yeah. of everything and had somebody review it. I'm and then just, like I say, the slopes and stuff to make sure that it's, yep. I mean, our big thing yep. is keeping it on, on the property mm -hmm. and make sure it's yep. going to go where it's supposed to go. Absolutely. So that's why I think if we, if we were able to keep our, the same peer reviewer, they uh, knew the project. So mm -hmm. just by updating and changing the numbers, they could do a quick check. So that wouldn't be too expensive. Um, I mean, and things like lighting and traffic and all those things, that's not changing, right? I mean, lighting's actually, maybe you've got to show us where, where the lighting does. More lighting in right. the parking yeah. lot. Well, in the parking lot, but I don't think there's any neighbors over there, are there? Maybe there are. Um, um, so. Yeah, so the, the types of lights that we're using are identical to what was submitted. The locations have changed. Right. Um, we're still respecting zero foot candles at the property line, which is, you know, that's, that's just the way that we design sites. Mm -hmm. um, but we... We can produce a new photometric plan if that's uh, if that would like to be reviewed. The um, um, again, I, I agree with you, folks, that it's sort of in a middle ground where it's it's not mm -hmm. a super dramatic change, but it is somewhat significant. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing, somewhat significant. And then I think, you know, police is going to work with like there, and that's that. So that's not we're not concerned about that. The propane, and all that, you have to get different permits for that. So we're not really concerned about that. It's really the stormwater management type thing, septic, you have to make sure that's right. Um, I, I yeah. kind of want to go back to see what our other issues were with this, right. you know, eight months ago or whatever it was, but. Um. Well, I, th I think we can probably leave that up to peer review because they'll, yeah. they'll know what it was and so. 
Yeah, so I think if you could do a plan and put like the slopes on it and then do the new calculations. Sure. Then we. Uh, sure. So then it becomes a, uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a legal thing whether we need to do another public hearing or not. Well, I think you're going to have to have a public hearing on these tanks, aren't you? Um, there is yeah. a public hearing with the select board for the tanks, yes. Yeah, I was going to say because those are, I know that they were, did some other somewhere else in town here. Oh, Yankee when, uh, Candle when, submitted something when recently. When Walters did it, I think we had to do it. Well, no, this was, I think this may have been the other, mm -hmm. the other outfit, but anyways. Mm -hmm. Do you have, uh, have you scheduled that? Do you know if that's scheduled? Uh, we will be submitting that uh, hopefully in the next few days. Uh, we've been working with uh, Somerset Engineering, who are experts on, on these large storage tanks, um, and they've finalized uh, the exact layout uh, of the equipment and, and have prepared some of the um, fire protection uh, information. Because if we have some time flexibility, then maybe we could do the same public hearing. Uh, yeah, share it uh, with them. Yeah. Yeah, have it all at one. Do the updated stormwater and the uh, propane at the same time. Um, I don't know if that matters. I, yeah, uh, I th that will probably work um, timeline-wise. Um, so yeah, it certainly it would be beneficial for us if, if we could do it. Mm -hmm. I, I will say we would gladly do that if the if the schedule works out. Sure. And the frontage, nothing changed there? The opening, the driveway is the same or similar? Or? Right. Um, so we did widen the driveway at the security gate, but then necked it down. Um, we're able to retain some of that hedge that exists along the driveway and are going to extend it um, to try to, uh, again, lower the profile um, at, the, at the front entrance there. Um, Blake doesn't want people to see in. Yeah, it looks like the trees are pretty similar to what you had, but mm -hmm. probably changed a little. Okay. And this was, we did the special permit. Too. So there, there's a special permit, there's a site plan review, and there's a stormwater permit. So the special um, permit, we don't have Yeah, to I, I would argue that the special permit, we, we really haven't changed anything related to there, what the special right. permit is. So it's really the stormwater site plan. You could just call it stormwater probably. You want to go with that, Max? Do you have a, uh, uh, regarding the site plan, do you have any comments? You know, I'm just curious why you changed the fence line behind the house on the south side of the driveway. Um, pre yeah, so you created more of a choke point in the corner of the office. Um, we do a tighter this, radius for your tractor trailer. We do, but this, uh, you know, th this was actually a comment that came straight from their operations people that they wanted more space in the interior of the site to to be getting um, equipment around, um, and they were not so concerned with with that one turning point. What's this long rectangular box um, on the back of that property there in, in the in, within the the pavement, I guess. Uh, that's the existing hedge that, uh, uh, even in the original plan, uh, there's some hedge there that's to be removed, and then we're uh, replacing it with uh, a hedge uh, on the outside of the fence line um, behind the 196 property. Okay, this, okay, I see. This, this now becomes this L-shaped. And it continues. Yeah, okay, all right, yep. And you own both the houses out front? Yes, and um, those, uh, those were purchased and then uh, they're merged through the a &R that uh, that you folks endorsed a couple months ago. So they're no longer houses, right? They're part right, of so they cannot be residences. Part of the commercial property. Um, or yeah, it's undecided exactly what will be done with them still. And just refresh me, the gate that's up here in the center top of your drawing. Yes. Those are just 
for emergencies? That or? is right. That is a padlocked gate. Um, Sons Mass also purchased that agricultural field, and that gate is the only way to get to it without crossing a wetland. Um, uh -huh. So having okay. access at that point is important. So that's for that's basically in and out to to, to the the um, correct. In, in reality, that gate will rarely be used. Uh, that um, field is being leased back to Pioneer Gardens, who accesses it um, uh, from. So Pioneer Gardens actually has a, a, an easement through what used to be Aryan's house um, right along the property line um, and then has an easement across that little triangle. I should probably point at this yeah. and not. Um, so uh, Pioneer Gardens uh, is allowed to access uh, through this property and then to cross this little triangular property to the field that they have a 99 year lease to here. Um, and then they are also leasing this field. So they will access that field um, in that direction. But as the property owner, uh, it's important that Sons Mass have, you have your own access to, right. to get to it. Okay. But that, the parcel that you're just describing, doesn't that have frontage on um, Child's Cross Road anyways? Um, I think there's one more parcel uh, up on Child's Cross. Uh, I think, yeah. I think this property is, I wish I had a larger map, but I, this property is not on Child's Cross because I think there are two right. houses here. Correct, there are. Yeah. But I thought oh, that the, the fields one, in the, the back. Field, they do, but there's a wetland um, oh. that would need to be crossed to access it from Child's Cross Road. Okay. Okay. All right, so, um, so when do you think you'll have new, something for a peer review to look at? Um, I am going to shoot for the end of this week, uh, but at the latest sometime next week, I would, I would expect it. Uh, sure. uh, would anybody on this committee like to contact Weston and Sampson and ask them if they could do a peer review follow-up for us? I, we should have that records. Priscilla should have the records of what they submitted to us and whose names is on it and stuff, so. I'll, I will. Could you do that? That's hopefully just probably easier if you do it than Priscilla will get the information from her. Yep. So I don't know, do we need a note on this or just a? Well, I'm just wondering too. When do you plan to have uh, the uh, the meeting, the uh, public meeting on the on the tanks? Uh, well, there's an advertising requirement for that, so it, it'll be it'll be up to them uh, how how quickly that gets on the agenda. I guess um, okay. I, we expect to submit the application um, this week. Okay. Can I just? Before we make our final decision, can I ask Dick, we, I also have a note that you may uh, also engage with the board on some possible zoning updates. Is that relevant to this? No, or? not to this, not relevant to this. Right. Okay. Right. That was just a note I added to the email that got swept into the agenda. Yes, well, I wanted to be clear. That's, so that's otherwise fine. we forget things. Um. <laughs> so are you thinking of bringing the information back to us at our next meeting or? Um, if I can, uh, I can either bring it directly to the meeting or submit it ahead of time through the building office. Uh, Whatever is most appropriate, I guess. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'd, you could just work with the. I guess we prefer to. Sub, let me let me let me amend that statement. We'd love to submit it um, uh, outside of the meeting, and if possible, have it forwarded to the peer reviewer. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, that's and fine, then yeah. then we schedule a public hearing, whether it's the same one or a different one, and then we have all the information at the public hearing. Okay. Right. And we'd have to phrase the. Uh, you know, public hearing in a way that says this is an update and it's being reviewed or something. But, yeah. So I don't know that we have to vote anything. I mean, I don't think so. I think we just no, I think we take care of it when we, the yeah. peer review comes in and all that. Yeah. That sounds fine. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't so, think we but, to vote on anything. Well, I guess we, we should vote that we do, we do want to have a public hearing um, <coughs> when the new information is available. I guess okay, I just want to put some minutes in here saying that, that we will tag along with the... And if we can, if, we, if it does fit with yeah. the other, we can do it. Okay, all right. Yeah. So let's just... So, 
So I move that we have a public hearing uh, okay. on the new information regarding the stormwater. Um, stormwater by, by we don't have a date certain for it, so that's why I'm wondering if we, how do we do the vote without the date certain for it meeting? Yeah, but what if we want to schedule that, schedule that time frame date before our next meeting? You know? Yeah, what's our time frame for notification and so forth? Well, that you you said weeks. there was a special one for the tanks or something. Right. Um, two weeks usually. It's it's usually, 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 usually 14 days. Yeah. Um, and then they need a little bit of time ahead of that to be adding. I mean, it's no order. different than you're saying. It's no different than a regular public hearing. You sounded like it was something different and more extensive. So that's why I asked the question. Uh, I guess I was referring to the permit being, and it's really the state fire marshal permit that's that's extensive. The the um, submission to the select board is actually pretty simple, um, but there is a public hearing for that. So let's make our date either the select board, or we'll schedule another one. Either the select board when they talk about when they have the public hearing for the propane, or we schedule another one. So what's your motion going to be, John? That we. We want to hold a. We want to schedule a public hearing to review revised stormwater plans. So you move to schedule Mill Village Road project to schedule public. To coincide with. Um, Select board open meeting. Public. Public meeting, yeah. Oh, public meeting. Um, for propane storage. Public hearing, but not public. Public, public hearing, okay. So that would be TBA then? Yeah. Okay, let me just read that back. Uh, John makes a motion to schedule a public hearing co to coincide with select board public hearing for the propane storage. But the our public hearing, hearing, vote to have a public hearing on a revised stormwater plan. Oh, and also on the storm. Well, no. We, our public hearing is for this revised stormwater plan. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so okay. vote to have a public hearing for a Revised stormwater plan for revised to okay, coincide yeah. with the select board. Revised um, stormwater only. Is that right? Yeah. Is there anything else on the site plan we need to? No. Okay. All right. So that's good. So, so state water to to coincide. Okay. So move move to schedule public hearing for the reduced for the revised stormwater. To coincide with the select board public hearing for the propane storage date to be date and time to be announced. And I'll second the motion. Okay, Kip seconds. And we should put 198 Mill Village Road project in. Yeah, I got that up yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I got it back on the other side of the page here at the beginning. Uh, yeah, 198 Mill Village Road. Okay. Date and time to BBA. Okay, so we got it moved by John Waite and seconded by Kip Camosa. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose, abstain, vote. Oh, you abstaining or opposed? Opposing. Okay, Opposing. and that's because of? Scheduling a site plan as a public hearing? Just, I've opposed everything about this project. I just keep consistent. Okay. I'm not voting the affirmative for this. Three, one, zero. Is that still is that still passed? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Max. Sure, yeah, those present. Max opposed. Okay. Three zero one. Three one zero. I'm sorry. What three one zero? Okay. All right. So um, so we'll follow up with the peer reviewer and then. Um, and we'll then you can get those things and then just keep us up to date on the um, or keep our office up to date on any kind of progress with the propane. 
increase. So now there. there's no there, there's no files of extensions or anything. We're just no. everything's going along until we get. This yeah, one. I mean this is a yeah. new this is kind yeah. of a new. Thing. Okay, all right. Gotcha. Just just so you know, once I make the contact, I'll have Priscilla contact you and Great. let you know that you're free to work with them or ask for their information for them. And then okay. the bill will come to. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And are there any, are there any I, fees? I will pass it on very quickly. Are yes. there any fees to the town, John? No? no. Oh, well, public hearing is the, yeah. the mailing and everything, but they would pay for that. The applicant yeah. will. Sorry. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Good. Thank, Thank you. Ready for me? So you do have something else. Oh, I do. All right. Um, this project, well, sun's mess. Just make sure the mic's here close enough to the oh, mic in case. So the client, the, the applicant, Sons Massing, um, would like to be able to use this, some space within the building at 198 for the, to make edibles and other products, cannabis products. Um, what is technically referred to in the regulations in the statute is product manufacture. I don't particularly like that word because it conjures up images of factories and smokestacks and, and, a, and a product manufacturing facility. It's basically a commercial kitchen. They'd like to be able to install a commercial kitchen within the existing building. Now the existing zoning doesn't allow product manufacture, only cultivation. So they've asked me to pursue the possibility of a zoning change to allow that. A zoning change, I don't know if you've been through this before, but oh, yeah. uh, you know, as, as I understand it, it's submitted to the, uh, a suggested change is submitted to the Board of Selectmen, and then they have a couple of weeks and they, remit, they submit it to you or remit it to you, and then you hold a public hearing, and then you decide whether or not you recommend or don't recommend the proposed change. I don't think you have the right to change it. I think it's just you take it or leave it. And then that goes to town meeting, where it needs to pass by a two-thirds vote. So I see two possible approaches here. Uh, obviously, it's going to be up to us to, to generate sufficient support within the town uh, for, the, for the measure, and that's not what I want to talk about today. I'm, I'm really more concerned about the best procedure. So I've got two approaches in mind, and I'm, and I'm here tonight just to reveal what they are and get your thoughts, your informal thoughts on, on, on them. Plan A would be for me to develop, a, to draft some language that would tweak the existing zoning law to make that change. You could probably do it in a few sentences. Um, and submit that to the Board of Selectmen and go through the same process. Uh, op option B would be to submit a much broader revision of the zoning laws. Now, as I mentioned last time I was here, I know there's been talk among the board and the selectmen about Excuse taking another look at the zoning laws because they are pretty complicated and long. And, and I'd be perfectly willing to, to, to submit for your consideration and to draft a, uh, you know, a new set of by bylaws, and I think I could simplify them enormously without making any substantive changes. Just, just simplify them. And uh, so I could do that. I could submit a more comprehensive change to the select and then follow the same procedure, uh, perhaps even both. So just thoughts from you as to which procedure would you welcome a broader change? And, and if, if we, we talked about a broader change, plan B, then I'd be happy to work with any member of the planning board. You know, we wouldn't have to go through a formal hearing process like tonight. I could speak to you uh, outside of this, of this meeting and develop a plan that, that, that would appear to be uh, consistent with the with the uh, with the concerns of the board, and uh, and then uh, submit it to the selectmen, and uh, take it from there. So uh, I'm wondering if you guys have any thoughts as to which of those two approaches would be better. Well, we we, we started some discussion at la last month's meeting, and we might potentially. Talk a little more about it tonight, although I think we're going to do other projects. Well, yeah. I, so, um, I don't want to get into too much, but yeah. I, I, did, I did reach out to a couple of attorneys about that, and I did oh, try to get in touch with you about it, but yeah. uh, we can talk about that later. Um, 
I guess, you know, anything that you wanted to do, if you wanted to write anything or give us any input, it's something that, you know, we can look at. Uh, how, how we act on it, I don't really know, but, uh, you know, I think whatever information that we get, if we end up working with another attorney, you know, we can always forward it on and say, this is what we've got, these are some suggestions that we've got, you know, you know we, we would talk and see how we want to shape it and, you know, I mean, we've, we've talked about it uh, because we do want to, you know, change this a little bit, but how, how that will happen, I don't really know, so. But you'd be open to a plan B approach. Well, I mean, just, we're always open, I guess, but one of the, you know, would be in the direction that we're heading. And one thing we might notice from last time is that we want to merge the medical and recreational, for example, because mm -hmm. right now it's two and it is confusing. So right. that would be something yeah. Yeah. that's sort of administrative and you could probably have help us with that, actually. Sure. Um, but the other thing we said at the last meeting is should we put a moratorium on the whole thing until we, until we do make revisions? I don't know if you're in favor of that. <laughs> I don't see any reason to do that. <laughs> um, um, and then we talked about, yeah, making sure that we get the law firm who's got the most up-to-date, you know, stuff now that it's been around a little bit. Um, the other thing was, you know, I, I know you, one of the things we want to talk about is the use of APR and other agricultural land for it. Um, so. Yes, I, I, I'm aware of how the board feels about that. Yeah. And, and I, you know, that is something we learned through this project is right. that how do you count property? Um, so. But um, and, and part of the concern was that uh, you, that you move, put up some new greenhouses, and then all of a sudden somebody else comes in and says want, wants to do something in those, and they move on, and you know that somehow weren't we trying to control that? Yeah, yeah. that was that was part of our. I'm our sorry, concerns. say it again, Paul. I'm quite well, I think that uh, maybe maybe Max can tell you because he was the one that kind of didn't oh, you bring I, it up, Max? Uh, I think Kippy was talking yeah, about. I, I mean, the, the moon mass and sun mass and. You use the ag loophole to build, okay. you know, See, like the, processing. What, what happened with this situation, and this is just my point of view, I can't really speak for the board, is, is that this was such a, a, a new endeavor for not only this community, but for the state. Um, and, you know, a lot of the leaders in town felt pressure to, you know, get in, get their foot in the door. And I don't, the process, I don't believe, was well thought out. Um, but we did have some bylaws, and like them or not, we followed the rules that were in front of us. Um, but some of the people that were very pro this project have now come back and said, look, at this is what we've created right here, what we protect all the land for in Deerfield. Uh, so now we need to really see that this doesn't happen again. Oh, you mean the APR thing? Well, not yeah. just the APR thing. We, you know, we had an agri a large agricultural you know, business here that was, because of our bylaws, converted to very much a commercial use. And the, the folks that sold this moved right down the road and now they're putting up another oh, large another thing. thing. And, that, and that, go, that didn't go. Moon Mass could come in tomorrow and buy that place for $2 million and we could have the exact same thing and they could go to another part down there. And then, you, you, you see, and this is what we're trying to figure out, how do we prevent this? Not that we're saying we're anti-marijuana. It's just what this is all about more, from, I think, for the majority of the people, is to keep Deerfield rural and not have this type of an operation spring up here, here, or here. Because the same, this, this could happen on Grave Street, you know. Uh, it could happen right on North Main Street. Well, know? if it's zoned commercial, I suppose it no, could happen. It I mean, no, 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 it doesn't have to be commercial. Yeah, it does have to be commercial because it's no. not ag. This was not... This zone not, commercial. Is, it never was right. commercial. It was it was a commercial operation, but it enjoyed the the agricultural right. exemption. Right, but that's what I'm three. saying. I mean, there's really not that much difference in growing perennials and growing marijuana. You know, they're both forms well, of no, agriculture. Well, no, there's just there's a there's no technical difference, but there's a big difference. Yeah, I, I mean, but it, it changes a lot. I mean, yeah. you know, around the greenhouses, you don't see the security, you don't see all the pavement. It, it, it's it's a different environment altogether, and and I think that that's what we're trying to have a better control of. I don't know if control is a proper word, but just to make sure that it ha doesn't happen in somebody else's backyard. So the other quick point I just make is that um, 
through all those public hearings, it was very much that we were going to allow cultivation of marijuana in residential ag because we did mm -hmm. want farmers to be able to take advantage of it if they were right. able to. And we did not allow manufacturing or whatever word you want to call the processing. And, and I think that was really clear, and I, I can't imagine that has changed all that much in town, so I just put that out there. So if, if part of what you want is, is to allow it, um, we, we restricted to where the manufacturing and the distribution of it can be. And yeah, and, and cultivation was really all, all we ever thought of in, in residential ag. So just to, you, you were at a lot of those meetings too, you heard the same thing. So yeah. you got a two thirds vote at town meeting to change that, I don't see it happening, but you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> frankly, I think, uh, I, I, I don't, this is not the time or place to make the argument about. No, it, all I'm doing is put it out there. And so just to, yeah. you know, you have to think through your process if sure. you really want to go through with it and it takes time and energy and stuff. So. Um, So that, that's what I have to say. So I don't know if you want to help us with this other well, if you, cleaning if up you, our bylaws, but we're not going to, it's not going to help you get that one into it. I just put that out there, I guess. Well, then maybe there'd be no point in my even working with you. Well, you that's know, if you're what saying I'm, you ain't, ain't that's why I'm saying years. we're kind of inviting you to work with us, but I don't yeah. want to be dishonest here and say that, you know, it's going to help your cause because well. I think, I mean, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but we, no, I, I, yeah. cultivation was, is, 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 I think, and already, you know, there's a lot of people against even that. So, um, and now, you know, we've got one that's cultivation, well, we've got two cultivation and then one processing and one dispensary. And, you know, I think a lot of You've people want to see how that two goes. Two cultivation, one. One processing. One. Well, you mean manufacturing, manufacturing? Manufacturing, yeah, sorry. And one dispensary. And one retail. Retail. It's not medical, it's uh, not Right, so that's why we've got to get the yeah. word in there, so retail. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'll you know, I'm speaking that. for myself, but I just, you know, I've heard a lot of, I've been through a lot of this, so. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, it sounds to me like you're saying you're not really interested in my working on a broader revision. I, I think what I'm saying is we're not interested in that zoning change to put manufacturing in residential agriculture. Or, or more specifically, to allow you know, commercial kitchen at this site. Uh, commercial yeah, kitchens, yeah. I think people aren't against. I, well, that's what we're talking I, about. I work with one, right, but what they, what they, cook, a, what they cook in that kitchen is a big difference. Yeah, so, I mean, you make it tomato sauce. Yeah. So a commercial <laughs> kitchen with tomato sauce should allow? What's that? A, a commercial kitchen to mix tomato sauce would be? With or without <laughs> marijuana in it. No. Well, no. <laughs> no, I mean. Well, those are the laws no. of the state. That's not our right. determinant. And, and I mean, then, the state then that wouldn't, you know, even if, yeah. if we allowed, uh, if, well, commercial kitchens are allowed in this town, just not in residential agricultural areas. True. And that's, that's the difference. Well, probably with a special permit, it is, I hope. What's that? Maybe with a special permit, it is. Uh, I don't want to. I don't know that. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about. I know, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, those laws go to the, that's the state that, qual that yeah. says what cannabis is and what it isn't. So it's not, a, we're not talking about a commercial well, no, kitchen. We're talking, we're talking local about zoning about here. Local zoning. Right, yeah. and in this case, the zoning would be for marijuana manufacturing, yeah. not, not a commercial kitchen. Well, you can call I'm it describing it as a commercial saying. kitchen. It's not yeah. a commercial kitchen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is well, okay. Um, thanks for your uh, time. Sure. Not sure what we're going to do, but uh, uh, I'll keep you informed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank yep. you. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So then we were going to go on to uh, old business, discuss, continue discussion about potential bylaw changes. Uh, we're missing three of our members. Thanks. So you're See working you with the... The police department, and everybody, right? So yes. I was right in saying we don't have to worry about that aspect of it. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, okay. Yeah, I tried to get old John today, but I'll have to see him next week. All right. So see you later. Um, do, we, do we want to have a quick? Yeah, let's talk about that if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I, I did reach out 
uh, oh, to a couple oh, yeah. of attorneys, and I, and I ended up speaking, and I thought it was appropriate. Um, that I, I spoke to Lisa Mead. She was the head of their firm, and, yeah. and basically talked with her about having Adam, you know, work with us on this. And she said that uh, Kate Federoff, who's in their op her office, um, has been really going to a lot of the state meetings and take, you know, doing a lot of research on this. And she feels that Kate is now more qualified than Adam to deal with mm. all of the marijuana things, you know, mm. pros and cons and stuff like that. So if we wanted some assistance that, uh, you know, Kate would be the one to, to go to. No, it's and Kate Mead. No, no Kate. Federoff. Federoff. Yeah, okay. But that's the same law firm. Right? Same law firm. You know, and I just, I, for a lot of reasons, and I, I have no problems working with, you know, other attorneys, you know, maybe like Mr. Evans, who are in that, but I, I, I just think in, if they're working on something in town, it, it probably wouldn't be the most appropriate avenue to go down. Yeah. Yeah, they could be consulted or they could add right. their, yeah. they could I give mean, their input, but uh, yeah. but it's not someone we want to hire, right? No, I, I, I always like information because sometimes you can learn things from yeah. that, you know, whether they're good or bad, you know. And, mm -hmm. But I, I think as far as that goes, I mean, maybe when we have a, a full board that we could talk into, you know, a little more detail about it um, and then um, get some of our ideas and we could call Kate in. I do know that, um, geez, I think, I don't think it's, it might be once a month. But I, I, for some reason, I don't think it is. But anyways, uh, the, the attorney, the town attorney, spends a, a day or an afternoon in town hall anyways. So if we could have Kate come on that time, yeah. then, you know, maybe not all of us, but maybe we could schedule a, an earlier meeting and sit down and run some of our questions by mm -hmm. her and stuff like that. Yeah. That way we wouldn't, we wouldn't pay for it. You know? Yeah, that would be great. Because when we have the attorneys come, it costs the town a lot of money because we're basically paying them for five or six hours travel. Yeah. And if it's late enough, we pay for a hotel room as well. So. so why are we hiring people that are two hours away? Well, I, you know, I, I tend to agree with that, uh, Max, that we should hire somebody local. Uh, I think in, in this particular case, um, you know, I don't, I can't say I don't know. Some of the other attorneys that I sought out who are local, I just think that they're maybe a little too involved in, in the promotion of the marijuana thing. And I, I just wanted a, more of an equal balance. Somebody who not only is up on all the marijuana laws, but will look at it from a municipality perspective, you know, as to, you know, what the procedure is. Because uh, a lot of times, you know, you get an attorney, and we've had several of them here, and they're all talking, they're, they're, they're skewing it their mm -hmm. way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that we don't really know, and yet when we talk with an outside lawyer, I say, well, yeah, all right, mm -hmm. that's true, but this is how it really is. And, you know, and I, I'm just a little leery about it. Mm -hmm. I just put a note, I, I, I'll call the... Uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, because I know they've been going a lot of these, this sure. should continue to follow up on this. And so mm -hmm. if we have that meeting, maybe someone from there could come for an hour or two at, you know, yeah. and, and add some stuff that we haven't, obviously yeah. we haven't thought of. So having a couple of people that's been following this for the past year would be really helpful. Yep. I think, uh, I, I mean, I think from my point of view, I, I think when we look at this, some of the things that we need to look at is you know, like you said, adding that APR land to get that of the zone and stuff like that, and how big these operations really are. I mean, if you look look at these changes, yes, the, their uh, processing right. building is yeah. smaller, but yet all the blacktop is quite a bit more, yeah. and with all these fences, I mean, this really is, it's a factory, you know? And it, it's far, a long ways from agriculture. And, you know, yeah, they bought these houses, but there are still other people mm -hmm. here, here, mm -hmm. and here, and, uh, yeah, and these these propane tanks are a, are a big hazard, so there'll be some I concerns know there. When I was on the select board, we there was quite a bit of issues with another propane storage in town that wasn't this large. So yeah, you know. that's what, yeah. But For some reason, I got a I got a, uh, a notice of it because I even where I'm at, it was somehow close enough to where the they were putting it up. Was it at was it a Yankee or something? Where was that? 
Where's uh, that big storage going to be? Right at right at the corner of uh, Mill Village and uh, isn't it um, George? Not George. Uh, well, George's propane is there back up from there. Yeah. Are you thinking of Waltz? Waltz. Oh, or is yeah. it Waltz? That's okay, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Waltz. Yeah. 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 yeah, Waltz is propane. Yeah. Right. That was for a lot of storage of propane. Yeah, yeah but that's not the, the, but that one was, here. This one here was back towards the center of South Deerfield somewhere. The way, the way it worked with the Waltz situation was that he has no large tanks like this at all, but he has right. a lot of cylinders, so they collectively, and even mm -hmm. the majority of his cylinders were empty because they're new tanks, but it, the way the rules are, you still have to count that. They have to count the truck. You know, every, everything has to be counted. Um, so I, I guess... I, I, uh, Do you know of some lawyers that you think might be I just, local? I just, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It, I guess only that expertise exists inside 128. I'm very, you know. I, 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 I don't, I, I mean. Just Mr. the way the state operates is, is you know, it, is the world revolves around 128. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. That's, it's the fact of life. You just do I mean, if you could do, if you could find someone, we would definitely. Yeah, I just don't yeah, know why. Sometimes it's a matter you know, of someone if looking. If you found somebody that was to your liking, yeah. well, it's well, not it's so knowledge. much to my liking. It's somebody that's it's knowledge doing the work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, I, I tried to get the town to hire uh, local lawyers, especially do a lot of real estate transactions. I knew there's a lot of people, and, and it, mm -hmm. it didn't. They didn't want to. It didn't get to go very far. So. We have the same law firm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's Springfield is quite close. Oh yeah. Well, there's some good attorneys in Amherst as well too. Yeah. You know, just... yeah. So you'll look around, or are you volunteer? I don't really know lawyers that well, but it just seems odd that we're oh, yeah. the other end of this. Aren't they like on the Newbury Port? Newbury Port. Yeah, they Newbury are. Newbury Port? You're right. They, and they we, are. They can't get much further away from us than. No, but well, we're, right now we're talking, partly this gets back to town staff and who's going to do the research on it. Right. Um, but it, so I mean, you, who chooses these people, though? The select board? Yeah. I think these would, and these, would, these have been around for a while. I mean, Lisa Mead's yeah, been there yeah. for mm -hmm. a while. And, mm -hmm. so. And, so and, and it is true. I mean, one of the things, uh, there are a lot of lawyers around, but few law firms really specialize in municipal law mm -hmm. and that's one of the things uh, there is a firm I think it's called KP law and they have an office in Northampton um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, the select board in the past has thought that this firm is so large that you don't really get the personalized service um, you know <clears throat> we do get reasonably good service uh, I say it like that because there have been times where we've waited a long time uh, to get stuff, but you know, I don't know. It's just uh, no. just just for my benefit. What does how does um, uh, the other the other guy that's a town lost? He part of Lisa Meets firm too. Adam Costa. Adam Costa. Yes, he is. He's part of that firm too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's um. Uh, Movement done, so we'll follow up with that on the, on the marijuana bylaws. What about um, solar electric? I, I think that we should department. just talk about the solar electric as to, you know, land coverage and forget about how much power it is. Yeah. Does that seem to make sense? So who do we get? Do we need anybody to help us write that one up? I mean, we kind of all agreed on that. <clears throat> I think if we look at it, I, I don't, mm -hmm. I think we can make it as simple as, you know, I don't know what, I, I don't, off the top of my head of saying, you know, we pick a number. If you're going to cover five acres, it's a large. If it's going to be more than 10 acres or more five acres, you know, it's extra large. And, and let me kind of run through my mind the residential part of it. Um, I think we just put an upper limit to it and say that's it. Everything is right. Think we, I don't think there's any restriction or even if there necessarily should be for residential. Well, I'm just thinking of well, something coming in and putting you said in. That 10 kilowatts or less is resident. There's no. You can just do it, but now yeah. we're saying we need to go higher than that, and so well, we need to adjust that also. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I think 10 kilowatts is probably, I mean, I know I'm a well, high. Well, it gets back to we got to do size versus 
Re right. right. But I'm saying residential is a whole different ball of wax from the other, and and I'm a pretty high user of it, and 10 kilowatts um, would probably cover everything that I do with it, but I'm a high usage of it, and so anything above that would really be high usage. Right. All I'm saying, we need to have a minimum. 10 kilowatts is not a whole lot. Yeah. For know. residential? Yeah. It depends what you do. Yeah. But anyway, we just have to pick up. A number where we say below that is. Yeah. You know, we can we always change it, it later, but I'd say yeah. right now to. I just to prevent somebody from coming in and having, you know, having a big commercial thing in their yard. Well, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, just because well, it's residential. I mean, Kerrigan, I don't really know, but I think. I think Kevin's Kevin's is twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight kilowatts, and it's just on his garage roof. Right. See, sometimes that's all. Yeah. yeah. So. This. Is that for used for farming? I mean, what's the? No, oh, he, he used yeah, it for his house. Oh, it's, it's it's more than he actually needed, but he had a garage where he's gonna have a welder. Mm -hmm. He's got a welder and stuff like that, and the yeah. house and the air, you know, everything. So it's, it takes it's to take care of everything. But it's well, I guess I don't have a, I don't have a thing with saying that the guy's a limit, but I just right. I just didn't think that, um, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know if we should actually put a number as far as the power output, just the area that it can take up. That's, that's what we're talking about with yeah. Yeah. ground stuff, so yeah. why not? Okay, all right. And, yeah. and then whether we have a separate one, if, if it's on the ground versus on a roof, right. maybe well, that's actually the issue. But why would you limit uh, rooftop? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Make it like if it's Whatever on the roof, the, we don't even care. If it's on the roof, we don't care. If yeah. it's on the ground, yeah. then maybe only so many square right. feet. Right, right. Ground mount. Just because that yeah. starts, and, and you can still do it, but you have to come and get a special permit of a public hearing, just, just, so your neighbors, to, just so your neighbors know about it, kind of thing. I was just talking to somebody the other day about. He says, "Well, can you put the can you put a tracker up on the roof?" And I says, "Whoa, that's that's a major." Yeah, that, <laughs> that becomes really not cost effective. But I, anyway. I, 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 don't, I don't know if that's really practical. But, but you know, just flat roof. I always think of these things in large things, and I think that as long as there's a way for people to do that, because if you have a situation. Um, you know, where, say my house, and there's a commercial lot next to it, and the guy puts in a solar field, and yet I want to put in a larger one of mine, obviously I can't. There, I think there should be a process for it. Well, the it's through the permit. special permit. permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. We're not so not limited. You're, you're saying if your roof won't meet your needs for your power, that yeah. just saying. Yeah. yeah, I think we're, a lot of this we're going to leave as a special permit, but just yeah. to give it some sure. some guidelines about it. Right now, it's um. Yeah, even right now, everything's large and extra large. Well, large is a lot of special permits. Yeah, there's no notes. Right. No. And that and that just has to that the new the new bylaw would just be the the, the surface that it covers square feet or, so, or so acres. Then, yeah. So then, if 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 the uh, residential became so large that it covered, you know, into the larger areas, is that does that mean they move into that category? Residential. I mean, if they if they move into the larger scale, yeah, and coverage. that's right. Because right now we're saying if it's under ten, you don't even have to worry. But if it's over ten, if it's between ten and two megawatts, you gotta you gotta do a special permit. So maybe we just move that to again some some other. We gotta figure out, we gotta figure, we gotta figure, that figure out, out an area. So again, that's why we all got to read through 3,800, because a lot of 3,800 is fine, but some of it is not, so. Mm -hmm. And then you got to look in the definitions. That's the other thing is we should also have the definition. Didn't we decide that it should be right in the yeah. place itself instead of having to go flip-flop around? I don't that, think that it's really bad to have one area of our zoning bylaw have all definitions and no matter what section you're in you can always go back to that and, and what I think a lot of times that but put some footnote enough. put some footnotes in there saying the, where the definitions are if you don't yeah. have them yeah, yeah I mean it would hurt there. to say because here large means ground mounted solar system generating capacity more than 10 more than 10 kilowatts less than two yeah, you could easily just put that right here so people would be clear that's considered large more than 10 yeah that's what I'm saying we want to up that a little bit Oh, yeah, because I was going to say, I only have 18 panels and mine puts out seven. But do we up it, if we want to get away from kilowatts, we've got to come up with some square footage thing. Yeah, and square. it does say ground mounted, so roof mounted doesn't even go into this bylaw. Yeah. So I think roof mounted must yeah. just be okay by right Well, I've, I've, seen, I've seen people that have two trackers side by side, and that would give you a 16, 
you know, 16 or to 18, probably, probably closer to 18. Is it, you know, and here's and another. It might be different, sorry, Center Village versus, res, you know. Well, that's, know, Center Village, that's, that's what I was going to say. A you, big one versus if you have 10 acre property out in residential. Somewhere. Exactly. If you have an area, you know, where, you know, you have houses and neighbors right there, and then you're putting these things that tractors that are, you know, yeah. 20 feet from somebody else's right. house versus put them in, in, say, in my backyard where nobody can see yeah. it anyways. It's, so I don't know if that's, that's where it gets tricky. I don't know if that's know, where that you come in with a special permit and then so the argument. The, on the percentage of your lot, maybe. Percentage lot size. So they came, they came they when they put mine in they had to go get a get a permit and they had to set it back ten feet from from the, right, from probably the long property line like you know like a structure you know because yeah. it is a structure. Yeah. Um, but I but I'm saying I can I can see where a neighbor would be upset if you know there was two of those trackers in his backyard and he never saw them before and now he's you know. Mm. So I, I, I think that's why the special permit is a good idea because then everything's on a case by case basis. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, if you if you got a, a, an issue. So with, are you, you saying know, the break off would be ten kilowatts? I'm not really saying with the break off because I think it's a, I think we should make it a square footage thing. So see if you can measure yours too. We talked about this last time. See if you bring in the square footage next. Time. I'll do the same with mine. Mine's six point six kilowatts. Okay. And, you know, How I, many I, panels I, do you have? I think it's 20. So, yeah, 20. so you can tell. They're, they're, you have 24 panels, but they're, they're high 16, output 15, panels. Yeah. They're, they're higher than the... Right, and you don't care about the output. You care about the size. Right. Oh, I care about the output. No, I mean, you do. Uh, what zoning <laughs> is <right>? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll, I'll, measure, I'll measure them up. All right. That's good. And then, and then just what's a plan... I took a picture also of another thing over at Waitley that's 30 panels and it sits up on the ground and I took a picture of it with my phone uh, and, and it's... Um, so you can measure that by knowing the size three, of the Three panels. by ten. I can yeah, just yeah, get yeah. on it with a tape measure and yeah. measure it. Yeah. They haven't sold, they're selling the house, so... So I think this, we have on this thing that we also want to talk about lot size and shape restrictions. Do we or is that... Is that who, who brought that up? I don't know. Um, that was in reference to the creative geometry that was done in Mill Village Road to allow, you know, with that they, oh, it choke point, down, there was that narrowed down, and to me, mm. when it went, when it, when it came to the minimum lots, uh, lot width, to me, the measurement terminated there, but other people believe that it, it started again where it was more than eight, you know, more than 100 feet. So can you um, go to that section of the bylaw and, and come back with a, how, we, how we could improve it? Because I, I forget where it is and everything, but you know. yeah, if you did that for next meeting, that'd be great. But it's, and then also, you know, it's a wetland there as well. And we should address that you can't use wetlands for calculations and lot size. Well, you, you have to use it for some lot size, but not for... You're saying for for, um, for permeable for permeable, permeable for commercial yeah. because if it's wetlands, it's permeability it's is water. different. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the whole thing with this uh, marijuana thing is it's not really commercial, but it is. But it's it's, you know, it's, uh -huh. it's a limbo between uh, commercial yeah. and agricultural. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. And then accessory yeah. apartment, I think we need some we need some help on that, but we do have to move on that because it's so outdated, I, I think. I, um, I mean, I know John didn't like, not you, but John Brown said, uh, I, I, I just think it's so simple just to make duplexes, duplexes allowable. Yes. I know. I know. Uh, it's, yeah. um, and don't it's, worry about if it's for in-laws or not. Don't worry. Right. Like, you know, and that, because it, it, I understand it, but I mean, there's a whole section of Deerfield where you can build duplexes. It's just on the outside that you can't. Uh, and if you made it so you could do it everywhere, then it would just make uh, make things easy for everybody. Uh, you wouldn't have uh -huh, to have uh -huh. all these bylaws or be worrying that, well, this guy's you know mom used to live there uh, but doesn't uh, now. His niece lives there, so it's still family. But is, is it really an apartment? You know, like and I think for sustainable development, it's a good thing. It is. It really and is. And so it, it actually, 
helps in a lot of areas, and it'd be interesting in a public hearing. I'm sure people will have something to say about it, but it'd be good to hear what that is. So, yeah. mm -hmm. all right. And I think um, does anybody know what the status of our town building inspector and assistant to the admin know. and anything? I haven't caught. I haven't talked to Diane we, in a while. We, we do have a, a full-time building inspector now. Well, I shouldn't say that. we have a, a building inspector other than other than Dick. Other than Dick. And uh, he's not here full time yet, but he's going to be. What's his I name? I think um, Robert. My name is Bob. <laughs> Robert. I can't think of his last name, but um, anyways, um, yeah. So he's here quite a bit. I haven't heard anything about uh, an assistant other than Priscilla. I don't really know if the board has been entertaining that or not, but. So let me like catch said, up on that because I'd like those those people should be part of this discussion. You yeah, know, and, and um, like I said before, I we statutorily have the right to have our own staff. Um, you know, it might be a little bit of a, a push and shove, but you know, we can go to the finance committee because I I know for at least the last five or six years this board has been extremely frugal. I don't think the board has ever been. More than five hundred dollars, even it was a ten thousand, and we cut it back. Oh yeah, it's a one. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, if we can't seem to get help from uh, the uh, selectman's office to get us, you know, assistance, we can do it on our own. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh -huh. you know, it just it would be smarter if it could be in the town, but if it's not, it doesn't look like it's happening. And hmm. so, all right, let's, I'll follow up with Diane too. But that'd be great if. Because the, a previous building inspector did put out something about accessory apartments. I think it was some stuff that we had talked yep. about, yep. and they brought. Yep. So we can go back and pick up on that instead of yep. starting from scratch. Yep. Well, we do have that. We do have that housing production plan that well, that's, talks about that it too. Amazing. This so thing came out. This thing came like out of that after yes, that a little bit. Yes. So let's so let's try to invite. That'd be good to know if we can invite him to the next meeting. Maybe. This inspector. is our new building oh, inspector. Building inspector. Yeah. In fact, I, I mean, that's I'm like the be person in... that overlaps with us the most, so we should know who they are. Yep. I, uh... All right. Are we ready to go on to the, the schedule of the next meeting? Sure. So, if this person is this person going to be part time or full time? Or... What person? The building Who's inspector, there? the new guy. Oh, he's going to be full time. He'll be full time. Yeah. So, so this is why? a transition period. Is that it or something? I, I think he has some. He, for, he had reasons that he couldn't be working for yeah. right now, but it wasn't from the town. So it was his. Was that Max? Um, I don't know if he'd be able to. I was just wondering why we don't, with all the with the stormwater and with all the other things that we have some input on, but we don't seem to have any means of enforcement. Um, why wouldn't we pay part of the inspector's salary or, you know, rather, because the select board's doing what the select board wants to do. Well, and, that's what will happen anyways. With well, and we that's where we're, we're always the poor cousin. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the, the building department, that's already their job is because they're also the zoning enforcement agent. So, you know, the things that we say we need to do, we just need them to, to go enforce out it. enforce yeah. it. That's right. I'm, and I'll be the first to admit that sometimes that doesn't always happen. No. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, they do watch it. And I know that recently they, um, the, the health agent and the building inspector have made a couple of joint trips to different uh, properties in town to do inspections and updates. And, um, you know, I know that they've been, uh, um, there's been a lot of, um, we don't hear about it, but there's been a lot of oversight at the, uh, the condo project on uh, yeah. okay. you know, Sugarloaf Street. Well, mm -hmm. next next month, September 2nd, is Labor Day. So that's a... Uh, so and then on the 9th, I, are we going to Well, go? I think I got an email. I wish I had it. Um, is the 9th might be a special election. It is. So um, mm -hmm. I think we have to pick a whole other day again, which is always troublesome. Mm -hmm. What are we specially electing? Or they're going to try for their $19 million again. Again. For the right. water, for the sewer, sewer system. It's going to be like the Deerfield Elementary School. It just keeps coming back until they get what they want. Well, we get, we get, uh, we get told to evacuate here 
just just the beginning of the end of the last week when they hit the gas line putting new water line into the into the new DPW garage. <laughs> what what? They were putting a new water line. Oh, okay. They put a whole new water line in all the way down Sugarloaf Street. Street down there. Yep, I know. Down there to And they hit the gas line? Hit the gas somebody hit the gas line. And uh -huh. they came over and says you must leave. So do we go to a Tuesday or a Wednesday? Well Wednesday's bad September? for me, so and then uh, Tuesday would be okay. Uh, the third, tenth on Tuesday's bad for me. Third. And the fifth, the it's fifth is okay, me. but the twelfth is bad on Thursday night. Well, you, we could try. For the third, I can't make it. Um, that's okay. Fourth, you can't make it, Paul. Maybe the 10th or 11th. Well, you know, I should double check on that. That that may not be correct. I'll, I'll double late. check on the fourth. That's what I'm fourth, thinking. Okay? Is, I mean, today's the early August. That's That would be six weeks go by. Oh. I mean, I don't know what, you know, there's no big things happening, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could go backwards too, for that matter. Yep, keep cut on the 26th. I'm not coming back for that. Oh, you're going to be out of town? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, but so this... the other way, you go to the 16th, then you lose Roger often on the, if it's not the yep. first Monday. Yeah. Well, else? I'm going to look at the 4th and double check that if you think the 4th will work. I may, I, I may, that may be clear for me. It may not be. Yeah, I could actually, I should put a doodle out there and just, like if we do the, if <laughs> I've I, heard of those doodles. <laughs> if I do the 4th and the 10th, maybe put that out there and see if we can get five, you know, if we can get five people for one of them, then we yeah. just do it. Sure, I, sure. You might, uh, usually on the Wednesdays would be a select board. Oh, Monday, right. So. I had to check if that was that Wednesday. I don't know. Is it every other? Or is it a, it's every other, it has been. I've been and I've is been it the 1st and 3rd or the 2nd and 4th? No, and actually, I think that the fourth they do, but I'm not sure because I think they're going, they're going to have uh, uh, informational thing about the sewer. Plant. Oh, getting ready for the ninth. Yeah. So you're thinking the choice would be the the third or the tenth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just do the third or the tenth. Okay. I'm I'm sure I'm out the tenth. Anything else? Mm -hmm. So do you want to? So you want to skate? It's going to be the third or the tenth here on the third or the tenth, and I'll uh, I'll put an email okay. out to make sure we get at least you know five or five or six people saying yes. Next meeting is nine three or nine ten at seven p.m. And I'll make a note to see if they can invite the. Uh, New building inspector. I'll see him tomorrow. I'll ask him to. Is he inspecting your building? Or? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm coming down to town hall to see Priscilla. Okay. To talk to her about the uh, mm -hmm. West and Samson. Anything else? Motion nope. to adjourn. Can make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four zero.